Well, let's get started. So cloud, cloud deployment models basically means the different type of clouds. When you say cloud, you are basically or most likely referring to a public cloud. But there are a bunch of other clouds that are out there, and we'll talk about it in this section. So the first one is the private cloud, then comes the public cloud, and then comes a hybrid between private and public. And there's this new thing that is out there, which they're calling the community cloud. And let's get into some details of this. So we want to start with the private cloud. You may already be functioning in this deployment model today in your organization, and you do not know that that's what they're calling it. So basically, this is exclusive use by a single organization. Like you might be in a data center and your own installation or your set of infrastructure could be a private cloud for you, right? So it's your set of infrastructure. You could be doing Hyper-V, VMware, converged networking, converged systems where you are deploying rapidly a bunch of workloads. So that's what sort of is called the private cloud, it's yours. But then it may comprise of multiple consumers or tenants, like think about a data center managed services like we have talked about in last couple of sections where you know, a data center might be managed services provider and they can have multiple consumers on their hardwares or their little ecosystem over there. So they're still a private cloud, but they can have multiple tenants there, if that makes sense. It's not open to the entire world, but certain tenants. And it may be owned, managed, and operated by the organization or a third party. Like you as an organization or as a company can have your own private cloud, or you can go to a third party like the data center managed providers and say, hey, manage my private cloud for me, right? And the thing that you have to remember about private cloud is that you have the full or maximum control on everything that you own there. So it's good for organizations who want to um, have the maximum control of things, okay? So let's move on to the public cloud. So when people say cloud in general, this is actually what they mean, the public cloud. It's provisioned for open use by general public. Like you can go in, take your credit card out, sign up for any cloud provider out there today like Microsoft Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud. It's, it's there for everyone. As long as you pay for it, you can sign up and you, you can use it. Like it mentions that, you know, may be owned by any type of organization. Like e there are a lot of cloud platform providers like Microsoft has Azure, Amazon has AWS, Google has Google Cloud Platform. So any organization can choose to build their own cloud offering and a lot of there there are a lot of small cloud hosting providers who do so but those are the large ones and it's not really a uh, you know um, it's 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 a huge undertaking this is not a small thing to do to be a cloud service provider okay but it can be owned by any type of organization public clouds host the infrastructure and services for multiple organizations. And this is what the characteristics of clouds that we have been talking about, that it has to have multi-tenancy or the whole concept of multi-tenant, that bunch of organizations, bunch of individuals can come and use this, okay? Organizations have typically less control of the services. This is very different from the private cloud that we have talked about because you know now you're using someone else's infrastructure so they will only allow so much for you to do in that environment so do remember that uh, this is important if you're thinking of compliance implications that hey you know i am uh, part I, I have to adhere to some compliancy from this regulatory body which wants me to have access to certain infrastructure then this may not be for you having said that Public clouds are also getting certifications to be part of this compliancy or to be certified by these regulatory bodies. So it might work out for you as well. And we'll discuss that further in other sections. Now, the next thing is hybrid cloud. And, you know, uh, this is quite simple. It's basically a combination of two distinct cloud deployments. Typically, people think of private cloud and public cloud. So for specific purposes, right? Um, Hybrid cloud model is a good way for organizations to try out the public cloud. So if you're just an organization who um, has its own servers and everything else, and you just want to try out uh, the public cloud like Microsoft Azure, hybrid model might be the way to go where you say, hey, I want to have a connectivity between my private cloud and Azure or AWS or Google Cloud, but I don't want to move 
everything there. So you are now in a hybrid scenario with certain workloads on the public cloud. And once you are comfortable, your folks know what to do. Um, your technical folks, they give you a go ahead that, hey, this looks good and we understand how things are working there. Then you can slowly migrate more stuff there. Now, this is not an argument, but people do say through some prediction, and we have been seeing cloud stuff happen in the last you know, four or five years, quite a bit. Um, and cloud has been there since 2008, nine, or, you know, even before that. But really the, uh, the uptake of cloud services in the last few years. So there was a lot of arguments where some people said that, hey, there will be nothing called as private cloud anymore. Everything will move to public cloud. And then there were certain folks, they were saying that, no, I think, you know, people will go and find out that public cloud is not working for them and they might come back into private cloud. What we are seeing in the industry is that large enterprise, they are ending up being in a hybrid model. Like they're still keeping certain things private. They're keeping certain things in the public cloud. A um, lot of startups, they don't even care about the private cloud because their time to market is more important. And they say, hey, we will start off in one of the public cloud platforms. And that works out for them as well. But we are seeing the stable way for large enterprises is mostly the hybrid cloud format. Okay, do remember that. Now, moving on to this new thing called community cloud, this is actually quite uncommon but it's there and it's important for you to know, okay? So this is like a community deployment that resembles a private cloud, but with a specific set of tenants. And let me explain why. So let's say a certain type of customers, they want to, they have similar security, privacy, or reliability need, and they want to be existing together in a cloud. And typically they would do that because these tenants may have specific intertenant data sharing needs, but these are separate organizations, but they want to share that data among each other. And they're still very uh, strict about their security, privacy, and reliability. So they may wish to rather be in a complete private cloud by themselves or a public cloud where everybody has access being a community cloud. The thing that comes to mind, and you will see that in Microsoft Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud as well, they're creating, creating something for the gov tenants. The gov tenants means the government tenants. So Microsoft, for example, has um, separate data centers which are only built for its government clients like Department of Defense, Department of Health Services, and all this where they do want to share the data, but there's they're keeping this data under very tight security and privacy controls. Like think of Department of Defense for sure, right? But they do want to sh share the data and they want to be in a cloud model, but they don't want to be with the rest of the world. So Microsoft built a community cloud or they call it the Gov Cloud, where they are going and hosting these folks there. So this is a very specific need for certain organizations. You will typically not be using that unless you're working for one of those organizations who want to use GovCloud or other community clouds for a very specific purpose, okay? And there are limitations to community clouds as well. They are not like public cloud because their interests are there as far as cloud is concerned, but it's very stringent on what they want to do or don't want people to do, uh, including folks in their agencies. So uh, they have restrictions, like, you know, the latest and greatest of cloud things don't come to them right away. They, uh, they hold up on releases to make sure they're much more stable and things like that. But it's a cloud model, deployment model that you should be aware of. Thank you for viewing.